Hi, this is Thundi E from MotorWork.com, and we are giving you a roundup of Apple's WWDC or Worldwide Developer Conference, which was today. Bunch of announcements. They announced a new line of uh, MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, and also iOS 6. So let's go through the hardware announcements quickly. Uh, today, they announced a refresh of the MacBook Air. It's an Ivy Bridge uh, um, MacBook Air, so it has a new Ivy Bridge processor. Graphics card, it runs the Intel HD 4000, so if you're expecting Kepler chips in there or the AMD chips, sorry about that. Uh, will come with um, SSD storage and up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, and the price starts at $999 and up to $1,099. So, uh, that's the new range of the MacBook Airs, comes with USB 3.0 on there. And uh, they also announced the MacBook Pro. And the new Pro actually is um, basically a developer's dream, if you will, in terms of hardware. It's got the new Retina display, so resolution is beyond 1080p. It's actually 280 by 1800. It's got a quad-core i7 processor in there. You can have up to 768 gigabytes of SSD, SSD storage, uh, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And it starts at 21.99 for the one the, for the uh, 256 uh, gigabyte SSD uh, option with 8 gigs of RAM, and then it goes up uh, from there on. Uh, and no pricing on the 768 gigabyte SSD, which we think will be super expensive but if you're looking for that kind of option on there and they're promising about seven hours of battery life with uh, the retina display on the new uh, MacBook Pro comes in 13 and 15 inches there is no 17 inch MacBook Pro anymore that is now gone uh, Apple has decided to take that away but uh, this is the new line of MacBook Pros they also announced the new Airport Express which now has dual band Wi-Fi so Apple's finally caught up with the rest of the industry who have uh, a lot of dual band um, Wi-Fi um, uh, routers, so like you say with the Airport, Airport Express, so you do have dual band channels, one for video and as well as one as a regular um, 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz for uh, uh, Wi-Fi, I mean for video streaming. It starts at $9.99 asking price, uh, styled the same way, it's got um, a one USB port at the back and that's uh, pretty much it. So now let's get into iOS 6. Apple announced its latest version of iOS for its um, iPhone, iPod Touch and as well as the iPad. Uh, the iOS 6 has a bunch of new functionalities um, including uh, Facebook and Twitter integration. So they finally actually come up and join the industry uh, the likes of Android and Windows Phone where you have full Facebook integration to your contacts with your Twitter as well as your uh, Facebook account. So uh, your um, iPhone now has that full integration all the way through and your contact list and so your Facebook contacts can be synced and linked to your um, to your um, iOS account as well as also getting updates and information from those different uh, aspects. Uh, Siri also has new capabilities allowing you to launch applications by speaking to Siri. Also allowing you to uh, watch movie trailers. You can also detail uh, sports uh, results and use for you. So it's a little, it's a little bit expanded and uh, it's been uh, broadened out a little bit. So if you like this kind of functionalities and you're looking for something like that, uh, they've gone a long way into adding that into it with uh, Siri. And you also have the new Maps. Um, Google Maps is no longer on iOS. Apple has kicked out Google and they have their own uh, mapping service with turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation. So finally, um, iPhone owners now have true turn-by-turn -turn navigation without actually paying for it. Um, the Google Maps turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation will have Siri support in the coming weeks. Uh, will also, the, the, voice, uh, the voice prompt for the navigation is actually the Siri voice and it's a full 3D, uh, um, full 3D map that gives you uh, full fridge uh, 3D options, 3D mapping options on um, on your iOS device. Uh, those are the things that they mentioned there. A couple other things uh, that were mentioned today at WWDC. Um, there's also uh, Passport, which is Apple's new app that congregates all your tickets and um, ticketing information, if you will, into one uh, hub. So your passport, sorry, not your passport, allows you to store QR codes for your airline tickets, your movie tickets, and it works with uh, certain applications like Fandango, Starbucks, gift cards, things like that. So anything you can actually scan really fits into this category. You can actually save it on your 
on your iPhone, which is pretty cool. So if you're someone who likes to go to Starbucks a lot and you watch a lot of movies, you don't have to carry different cards for your, your promotional cards or gift cards for others. You can actually just save it on your device and scan it with the QR code uh, when you're there. So that's something that's very nice that they've added to um, iOS. Of course, we mentioned uh, Maps in there. And that, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, no talk of new devices like the iPhone 5 or a new iPad. Uh, we saw refreshes to the uh, MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. I uh, really like the refreshes to the MacBook Pro. Uh, seems like it's a solid piece of hardware. You do have your top tier uh, NVIDIA chips in there as well as it runs a Kepler graphics card. Although it's a 650 mobile card instead of a 680 that you find in most high-end um, high end um, systems, laptop systems, although, but since it's running 650, you do have 16 gigabytes of onboard uh, memory on there. So that should work well for uh, people who are uh, graphic designers, use um, Photoshop, as well as um, you know video editing software and there. I think that works well. Also, you do have uh, the refresh to the MacBook Air, which um, it doesn't come with a retina display, but does has USB 3.0, has the latest, uh, uh, Ivy Bridge processor in there and it looks also Apple's also dropped the price by you know 100 bucks so it gives you the ability to um, you know get something as efficient and um, you know very effective piece of hardware and it looks like they've now differentiated the lines in where the the MacBook Air is now the consumer line if you will and uh, the MacBook Pro is really geared towards uh, you know people in the technical realm who are looking for a very uh, sophisticated piece of hardware in terms of iOS, it seems like Apple is playing a lot of catch up to the rest of the industry. A lot of the functionalities they stated today, including you know the uh, Facebook and Twitter integration, maps and things like that, have been uh, things that we already have seen with Android as well as even in so, to some extent Windows Phone. Uh, some of the capabilities like the ability to ignore uh, calls on your iOS device is something that has been there for the longest time. So. Uh, not much in terms of innovation, but a lot of catch up and just a lot of refining uh, the system. And um, you know, we'll see more of that when, of course, when the iPhone 5 launches. But uh, iOS 6 will be available uh, June 23rd. Right now, the beta is available to developers, so you can check it out if you are a developer. But it will be available June 23rd for download. And uh, oh, one more thing: uh, so, uh, updates Safari was announced. It takes advantage of the Retina display. Uh, I think it's called Mountain Lion Pro, I could be wrong. I'll write that down for you guys in the description. Uh, upgrade fee is $19.99, um, similar to what Apple has done with most of the upgrades anyway, so it's about $20. And uh, that's available now. The MacBook Pro is available now for order as well as the MacBook Air, and, and also the, uh, the Airport Express. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to all our pages on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, Empire Avenue, the works we have all the, the the links for you guys down below. So this is Thundee E saying thank you and always enjoy entertainment.